combine that with uh, what Facebook is releasing right now and testing in a beta called um, Canvas lead ads. So lead ads obviously is another big thing, especially, and that's, that's like a difference from like a solo or affiliate marketer to like, I guess, like bigger agency, because once you establish like uh, a really good relationship with like an advertiser or like um, your client or whatever, you can actually talk to them, like present them all these features, almost sell them these features, do lead ads for like an insurance company, hook it up with their CRM, do amazing things together, like even put a canvas before that, you know, um, that's how I think you should make, make use of these, these new ad formats. And yeah. Hello and welcome to The Robust Marketer. Today we have one of my heroes in the marketing space. We have Michael Brenner. Uh, Michael Brenner from 6H Media. I met him when we first ran Facebook Mastery Live. Uh, in Berlin, and he was the quiet guy that sat in the back and watched us. He's a good friend of my partner, Patrick's, uh, and I, I didn't know a ton about him at the time. Uh, he was super friendly, low-key, super genuine, nice guy. And then, and then it comes to our private mastermind that we do, where all the the, the you know um, the people have paid to come to dinner and to get one more presentation. And I am wiped from a day of presentations. And they, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, Michael's going to talk. And I'm like, oh, great. Another presentation. Here we go. Uh, and then he proceeded to blow everyone in the room away with probably the best presentation of the day by far. Uh, and he didn't even get to do half of it, which was what was really amazing. Everyone was dying to hear the rest of it. Uh, so you want to get in touch with him maybe about that stuff. But Michael, welcome to The Robust Marketer. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm really well. What a nice introduction. Berlin was so much fun. Great event. Yeah, it was. And you're calling from Cologne, right? I'm calling from Cologne, Germany. Yeah, we just moved into our new office, like all the trash and the boxes on the other side of the room. So yeah, I tried to get a nice view. That is a good view. That's great. Um, and so 6H Media, how big is 6H Media now? Uh, we're like 10 people, you know, um, the Col Cologne is actually has, has grown to be the biggest office, but um, there's um, two more people in New York, one guy in London and the rest of the team. It's right next to, uh, to me here in the other room. And yeah, I mean, Germany, it, it wasn't planned out that way, but it's uh, Cologne has, has become a large like online marketing, performance marketing hub, like Adbaker is here, a um, couple other companies, actually some networks like across Germany, um, then AWE, gladly is now taking part in, in Berlin, uh, taking place in Berlin. And yeah, like this is how we're set up right now. Amazing. Yeah, we have. Uh, I've been to Mexico a few times as well, which just balloons the city, right? You get like thirty people, thirty k, thirty thousand people, or something at Mexico. It must it must be crazy when that rolls into town? Yeah, all all our business partners and friends like they stayed in the shittiest hotels for like eight hundred euros a night, and the city is it's like a million people city, a little bit more, but it's way too small for a huge um, conference like the Mexico. Yeah. Oh, Adblock is also in Cologne too, right? So you've got both sides of the coin. You've got the advertisers and, and those blocking the ads. I remember I met them on the train when I was in Cologne and it was right when they had just announced their new feature, which was ads. And I thought that was pretty funny. Adblocker was going to just start showing ads. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. well, what kind of world do we live in when Adblocker is showing ads? But everyone's got to make a buck, I guess. Exactly. Nice. Okay. So what we like to do on the Robust Marketers, we start with your marketer's hero's journey. Tell me a little story about how you got to where you are, how you started, and, and, and a few things that happened in between. Um, so every, everything for me started like around seven years ago when I was in the hospital reading about making money online, SEO and stuff. And the funny thing is, if you ask someone in Germany about affiliate marketing, most of the people will think of like SEO and Amazon affiliate marketing actually. Exactly. Because because like that's how everyone starts out here and that's how I started out. Like I, I wrote the first product review myself. I ranked the sites on Google. That's how I made my first money online. And then uh, I slowly started into getting Facebook ads right when the newsfeed started coming out, which was a good time to, to start doing Facebook ads. I didn't do it full time, unfortunately. Um, I was still doing SEO on the side. Um, and uh, like two years later, I think, um, I, I co-founded AdBaker already, um, where we did like you know client work, um, Facebook advertising for for larger German companies, and on the side, you know, we started um, going into like more the affiliate marketing industry as well. Interesting, and that and sort of it's taken off from there basically. 
Yes, yeah, so um, then we all went on SCM. I got to know my um, current co-founder and business partner at 6H Media Max, who, who's running the New York office. And um, yeah, we, we got together over SCM. Like actually I know Patrick from SCM as well. Um, we all got together, Skype sessions, and then, you know, 6H Media kind of took off when we first launched some financial legion in the US. It was back with Yahoo Gemini, yeah. um, like three and a half years ago, I, th I think. And then there was also still, it was the time of like display arbitrage, like all these viral Nova types of sites. We had a few project, projects in that space. So it was a healthy mix of, you know, like client work, CPA offers, display R. It was like it was like all over the place, but now we kind of, you know, uh, found found the direction we wanted to go, have like grown with like really so solid big partnerships. We're doing we're like a global company doing, you know, worldwide um e com and lead gen, still focused on the English and German speaking speaking market, but yeah, it's it's been been going well and we have like an amazing team that um I've I'm very grateful and thankful for. And your team at only ten, you know, your your revenue your revenues are, are are quite substantial. They're they're into the eight figures. It's safe to say. Is that fair? Not to yeah. sandbag you, but that's incredible to be doing that with only ten people. Uh, that uh, you know, who who was your first hire, and why were they like? Why were they so important to, to get? Um, our first hire was Willis, who's like, he, he describes himself, so I can say that, as like a farm boy from Lithuania. And um, he had his own small fixie bike shop here in Cologne. And I actually fi found him over Facebook, of course, over like a local Facebook group, which is like an amazing place to look for, for new hires, new team members, by the way, for everyone who's looking for like strong partners. Um, and then, yeah, he just came in, you know, he knew nothing about online marketing besides doing a few AdWords PPC ads for like uh, his bike his bike shop, and then we showed him the world of affiliate marketing, and now he's he, he's literally growing into like the biggest uh, media buying rock star I, I know. You know he's like I, I really want to when I now we just launched a new video ad to find new hires. If I want to do the targeting, I want to build a lookalike just off of him because he's done such an amazing work, and I we obviously want to find more people like him. But yeah, he's just a really good friend. We have like low hierarchies here, and um, yeah, now he's like heading up our media buying operation. You just got to geo target Lithuanian farms, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> See if you can find some more farmers. That's yeah. uh, that's really cool. So, what is your what's your mix now? Are you guys mostly an e commerce uh, sort of CPA shop, or do you still have a similar mix where you're doing some arbitrage, some e commerce, some lead gen? Um, like our main business, I, I can't talk too much, unfortunately, like about the, the projects outside of the, the main CPA business and like the, the agency performance business. But like we're we're mostly focusing on financial legion. Um, that's fair to say. Uh, but we are also running like our fair share like of e-commerce products, and um, that's all across like you know at some sometimes even a hundred countries plus. Wow. Um, but like Germany is a big market now for us, um, UK, US, Canada, Australia, like all the, the usual suspects. Nice. Does I, I wanted to ask you too, does 6H Media have any meaning? Or is it just one of those things? I remember I started at Neverblue and, and everyone is always trying to figure out what Neverblue actually means. Does 6H have a meaning? Such a good question. And actually, like some of our close friends and partners, they like say it right away and like, oh, that makes sense. And some of them are like just mind blown after three years when they learn about that um, like the six H stands for like the six six hour time difference between um, Germany and New York. That's hilarious. That's, like, That's super I don't know, good. Like, I don't know. Like I thought it's it's easy to pick up, but I think eighty percent of the people just uh, don't really get it right away. I like it though, and that's and as someone who I'm on the west coast of Canada, so it'd be like plus twelve or whatever ridiculous thing. No, I guess it's only plus nine. I guess it would be nine nine H media. Which nine. Sounds, yeah, I might have to start that up. We have that problem two weeks a year, by the way, because we then have to rename ourselves to 5H Media because, like, there's one week where German <laughs> day, daylight saving and, and East, East Coast daylight saving, like, differ. So, I like yeah, it. but that's, that's, that's the story behind it. Nice. Okay, good. Well, thanks for relaying that. So, so basically, w when you came and spoke uh, at the Mastermind at, uh, at our event there, you spoke a lot about uh, different kinds of formats. Uh, things that people weren't maybe getting the most out of right now on Facebook. 
what what are some of the things that you guys are experimenting with, seeing some success with in terms of like different kinds of ad formats these days? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good one because Facebook is releasing them so fast these days. It's almost hard to keep track. But the biggest one, I think, they released the last, I don't know, year, it was like Canvas ads, which most of the people are already familiar by now. But um, they're getting better and better each day in terms of what you can do with it. So basically, it's just like this little uh, landing page within Facebook where you can can have all sorts of like drag and drop elements on there. You put your logo, your, your, your text, your ad copy in there. Um, and these, these are, if you get a little bit creative on them, these are amazing because you can multi link different canvases behind each other. So you can really, you know, warm up your traffic. You can give the users a lot of product information in the beginning. Some people made use of that because policy wasn't like super behind canvases, but they, they look more closely now. So just as a disclaimer for everyone who's, who's trying to do these things, but yeah, canvases has been a big one. Um, you know, combine that with video ads and then the feature of Facebook ads in the back end in terms of um, engagement audiences. So you, this has been available since, since a while now, but you can target people who watch certain percentages of your videos. You can target people who scroll uh, through, like who went into your canvas, who scrolled through a certain, um, to a certain point. And which is, and the other thing that is really amazing, you can target people who clicked out of your canvas, which if you think about it, and that's exactly what Facebook is trying to do since like ever almost like bringing the whole like out external funnel. Like that's what they do in e-commerce, right? They, they don't want you to shop like outside of Facebook. They want to bring the whole funnel, including the add to cart, checkout payment. They want to bring that uh, into Facebook and they're already doing that now. So um, yeah, if you think about it that way, you just bring your landing pages to Facebook, have much faster loading times. You can create all these audiences, um, which you can use for retargeting because people went to your canvas, clicked out of your canvas. Um, so it's basically just bringing your whole marketing funnel closer to Facebook. And then what is nice about it, you know, create all these amazing custom audiences out of it, create lookalikes out of it, um, which you can also do, you know, in external funnels. But for some for some offers, for some products, for some clients, it might, might make a lot of sense to, to have these canvas experience, especially uh, because of loading, loading times and loading speed. Yeah, no, and loading times, especially in the mobile environment, makes such a huge difference. That's something that that you can't really overestimate, um, yeah. can't really underestimate, rather. But yeah, it makes perfect sense from Facebook's perspective. They all of the big internet giants. Their goal is to make the internet, you know, make your experience on the internet Facebook. They want you to Facebook to be your portal for everything. So the more that they can keep you in. Uh, the better. We're going to have to experiment with that. We're doing a lot of stuff right now with ManyChat uh, and uh, and messenger marketing. We're running. We're we're basically warming up for our high end mastermind that we're doing uh, with with some really cool ManyChat campaigns, seeing some great results. And that's another benefit of Canvas, I imagine, is you can kind of interlink that the the messenger marketing with your experience as you go through there and get different messages depending on where they get into where they engage the Canvas. Exactly. And, and I mean, that, that's something we're using, like Messenger is another ad format that's super interesting. I'm glad you brought that up. Combine that with uh, what Facebook is releasing right now and testing in a beta called um, Canvas Lead Ads. So Lead Ads obviously is another big thing, especially, and that's, that's like a difference from like a solo or affiliate marketer to like, I guess, like bigger agency, because once you establish like uh, a really good relationship with like an advertiser or like um, your client or whatever, you can actually talk to them, like present them all these features, almost sell them these features, do lead ads for like an insurance company, hook it up with their CRM, do amazing things together, like even put a canvas before that, you know, um, that's how I think you should make make use of these, these new ad formats. And yeah, I mean, Messenger is, is a big one. People like the only negative point I hear about it, I guess, is people are still very like um, depending on Facebook, because if you build out a messenger list of 10,000 people, it's probably worth than 100,000 email subscribers, you know, based hard on to the compare engagement based, rates, on yeah. the, based on the, the metrics like delivery rate, open rate, we're seeing um, delivery rates up to 100%, open rates 90%, click rates 50%. If you tell that to like a, you know, very experienced email guy, like he will be like, what's going on here. Um, and so it, it, I think you should definitely use it. Just be aware of what the policy with Facebook messengers, be aware like on the dependency you have with Facebook. 
um, and also that there might be changes coming up in the future where I don't know if Facebook's gonna eventually charge you for like outgoing mess- messages in Messenger, right? They 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 always try to monetize their their platform, so that might be one thing they're doing, especially if you include a link or like an advertisement, which you oftentimes cannot even do because it's against policy. Like you know, you need to if you broadcast messages after 24 hours after someone subscribed, you actually need to get an interaction from them before you can send them more promotional material. That's like um, something you shouldn't run, shouldn't do if you're like, where you should be aware of. Yeah, especially when you're building your, you know, with Canvas, you're building your whole experience into Facebook. So therefore, yeah, you have to be extra careful about policies so that you don't, because you'll lose everything. You know, you could potentially still run some native ads to a funnel that's built outside of uh, Facebook, for instance, and maybe even find other ways to run Facebook. But when you build everything directly into the canvases, I guess that is sort of a eggs in one basket situation. So as long as, but as long as you're aware, as aware as you can be of Facebook policy, because yeah. it's always yeah. changing. Uh, yeah. How's your relationship with your rep? Do you have a do you have one of those reps out of Ireland as well, like Patrick? Yes, yes, we have we have an amazing Ireland uh, Ireland rep, and we've been there two weeks ago. We're going there um, in three weeks again. Um, the relationship with Facebook is great. Like, um, it really there's it, almost just two ways, right? Either way, you try to find a way to work around Facebook, or you you know try to to make it work with Facebook. And I mean, so much has happened, I guess, just this year with like the whole Facebook platform, the relationship with like performance marketing, affiliate marketing. Um, but I think. I think if you just try, you know, to go to provide higher quality creatives, that's a big one. You know, if if you have a small team, invest a lot into your creatives. We like hired a full time video guy. We we want to do really high quality product shots. It doesn't doesn't only help you with policy. It even helps you, you know, with with performance on the actual ads because Facebook real, realizes if someone puts like a really high quality 1080p 4K video in whatever compared to like a really amateurish, you know, low quality video image. So um, yeah, these are things you should, you should do uh, when you want to run um, compliantly with Facebook. And then just another thing I just realized the other day is like a year ago, I would have never told a, a new media buyer, a new campaign manager in, in the company to, to use Shutterstock images or stock photos, you know, because I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the, you need to use the opposite of that, you know, try to go more amateur, more clickbaity, but, everything changed right and, and right now we're seeing actually good success with sometimes using creatives that facebook provides like in power editor on ad level once you you upload an ad they provide you with like um direct access to shutterstock um photo material really and i'm not saying yeah, yeah they do so you, you you don't even have to like buy photos from shutterstock to to use them in your creatives you can just search for keywords within facebook and obviously it gives you the typical shutterstock you know, sales, yeah. salesy look, um, and and I'm not saying you know these are our most profitable profitable creatives, and obviously CTR is usually lower on these. But you know, use them for retargeting. Just play around with the headline. You're gonna pay higher cost per click, but um, you know you're gonna run to much less Facebook policy issues, and the quality of the leads is actually usually higher. Depends yeah. on what space you are, right? But the, because if people really identify you as that brand, then sometimes you don't want that super amateurish clickbaity. Oh, what is this like old lady doing here about you, you? You want to be a little bit more salesy in your creative to, you know, prime the user and warm them up for like what they're going to expect. Because if you're super clickbaity, everyone clicks on your ad, you have a 10% CTR, super low CPC, but like, 80, 90% of the people bounce right off your landing page and Facebook measures that. We all know that by now. So there's definitely some things that change. And I, I, by now I recommend playing around with, you know, much cleaner creatives, high quality creatives, especially if it comes to retargeting. Um, you know, also use images on your landing page. Try experiment, experimenting split tests, like more amateurish images on your like blog page, editorial page, offer page would like. A more Shutterstock type of images, and then you know keep the continuity going. If you then do retargeting, use like the image on your insurance landing page for like your ads to to you know have people really remember your brand and you know create that brand awareness. Yeah, it's it's really this is the first I've actually heard of this because for the longest time, 
you know, you are going for the, it was when I, when I was doing a lot of arbitrage and display and stuff like that, it was so frustrating when you'd create these beautiful ads that just, that didn't work as well or didn't work yeah. as well in, in that current environment. You'd have to do something, you know, you'd draw on a screen on like, you know, you'd use your mouse and draw like a, like something over top of an image and it would work way better. But I can see how it like, first of all, Facebook is changing the game, as you say, by, by a lot of their policy updates and forcing you to, to, to kind of improve the quality of your images. But it's interesting how it's like moving the yardsticks so that it's actually producing higher quality results as well. Yeah, that's, that, really that, that, that's the most interesting part to me too. But it's, it's not just if you do 10% of the work, you know, like, and that's why it's so hard to like, um, you know, compete in this industry if you're like a, a lone affiliate. And I'm, I mean, there's examples out there of really, really successful people doing it because they have amazing systems. But if you're not putting in the work into your creatives, into your funnel, you know, providing, providing a little bit more value to the consumer in the end, then um, you're going to have a hard time, you know, in terms of how sustainable is your business really then. Yeah. Uh, the one the, the one thing that came to mind too while you were talking there is this, you know, a lot of, I bet a lot of your best campaigns that you're running and your longest campaigns, your biggest money campaigns are ones where you've built out a relationship with a direct advertiser. Um, and, and with what Facebook is doing by adding all these new formats and stuff, it's really going to up people's agency game. It's going to up the potential for people to be able to work directly with these big clients because as Facebook rolls out more and more stuff, it's going to be harder for the brands themselves to manage this stuff and to keep on the cutting edge. So I think we're going to see a big, a big lift in, in, in Facebook experts who can make these direct relationships with advertisers and really drive the cutting edge stuff that you're talking about. 100%. And I mean, that that's all, all it's about, right? You don't even have to be like an affiliate and find an offer. You can just be a smart Facebook marketer, you know, see an ad in your newsfeed or just see a great product of like a, a company that's already doing well, a startup, whatever it is, you know, go, go to them, pitch them like what amazing things you can do by now with Facebook. And if you have a little bit of experience, you know, you will most likely find some success in one way or the other. And Another good good point you brought brought here with the with the big brands, you know, and coming back to like using more Shutterstock. Shutterstock is like a little bit too much, but just very high quality product videos and images. Yeah. Like that's what brands do, and they obviously get bad metrics, and they want different things. They want to get their brand awareness and reach and everything. You're like more on the performance side, but what what they don't know is like what comes after just, you know, putting out that beautiful image out there, you know, how to do um, video retargeting campaigns, like, you know, c creating custom audiences based off percentage of video viewers, these, these canvas lead ads, engagement audiences, all the, all the, you, you know, how to utilize the pixel to send back amazing parameters to your site and make use of all of, of all these um, things on the platform. So yeah, I, I totally agree that it's, that the game changed. Um, you need to, yeah, almost pitch the new features to, to some of the clients, but I think um, it, it still works amazingly if you know what you're doing and if you're always staying up to date. And so you actually can provide a lot of value to the consumer and also to your advertiser or partner or client or whatever, it, whoever it is. Yeah. And it's, it's easy to underestimate the, as an affiliate, the value that you have to, to someone like that. But it's, it's really important to think about how much more, you know, knowledge you might have than someone who works in the marketing department at one of these companies, even if you've just exactly. run sweeps or whatever, right? Like you already have a, have a huge knowledge base that, that, that you shouldn't underestimate. So one of the questions, so as again, as you're talking there now, one of the things that we experimented with a little bit uh, in my last company when we were doing display stuff for brands is this idea of like sequential retargeting or the idea of sort of like storytelling over and over ads. I've never really gotten... Have, and, and so that involves like dynamic sort of decision trees in a way of like if they've seen this ad, then show them this ad mm -hmm. and sort of have you ever experimented mm -hmm. with those kind of sequential based things or is it more still like is it still more like, you know, you're hitting people with images uh -huh. and then hit them with another image? Like, do you ever step it out and try to make it like a story? Um, on, on like a smaller scale, yes. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But what you just talked about with like the sequential storytelling and targeting, a really good case study and most of the people probably know of him by now um, is from John Loomer. Okay. John Loomer does, does a lot of these things. He has like, I think he's like a British guy and has like a big blog on Facebook marketing called um, johnloomer.com. And he, he, he does a lot of these like experiments where, you know, puts people into different 
categories based on like what pages they've seen and then even does like click this ad and then you're going to see a blue ad and click on the blue ad like it works with colors and all that stuff so hmm. um you know a lot of these things i always try to go for the 80 20 you know like the 20 percent that will give me 80 percent of the results so it's not always easy to with every campaign we we run to like go that granular um but what we do there is even in lead gen if you have like a long lead gen flow where people you know have to go through like 20 different fields and and questions you can if they drop off at a certain point during these questions you can actually you know have every and that's what i recommend for everyone running facebook always have your funnel um pixeled as much as possible send send all the information back uh you have be it an e-com store where you send back like um the amount of uh of products the category of the product, the the um, the price of the product, people put into their basket, check out with, you know, all that information you can easily send back um, to Facebook through like their quite sophisticated events. So yeah, that's what we do in Leechen. You know, we send back as much information as possible. Every single question in a step, we usually have like a, a, a certain event, a custom event or like a standard event on. We send back all that information. So later on, like the point where people dropped off, you can try to directly get them from that point back into the funnel. And you can also experiment obviously with like, um, you know, maybe if they, if they dropped off in the beginning, you almost had them there, but maybe, you know, they had some, some question about like their refinancing or their, their just huge, huge, um, new insurance they're gonna, you know, apply for. So you retarget them with like a, uh, a really good video that ex again explains them the service or product you're selling um so yeah that's that's something we do and then definitely also play around you know with trust logos that's a big one on the landing page okay. um yeah and even different different colors and and all of these var variables you can test but yeah like regarding the regarding uh, the retargeting um i haven't gone that granular but there's definitely some like the, the most basic advice I have on that, use video ads for cold traffic and then image ads for, for retargeting traffic. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that I've heard echoed quite a bit. So I was talking with uh, with Steve Tan on a podcast yesterday, and he he had an interesting point about about images. Yeah, I, I asked him about his video versus his his uh, his images that he used, and he was saying that like so many people are now doing video ads that it's almost like they forgot about images in a well that people are like yeah. you know and so there's an opportunity still in images this this was this happened when i was at never blue as well where we we invested heavily into into mobile uh, running mobile stuff and then everyone sort of forgot about old, like desktop and so then there became an amazing opportunity in desktop it's really interesting the way the market sort of like morphs and shifts yeah i definitely agree and i, I now that you say it, you know I, I hear a lot of you know people that are doing doing huge numbers on on facebook that still do really well with video, uh, with image campaigns. You know, they can, almost can't believe we're like running 80, 90% of videos now. But um, yeah, I, you know, I always try to have a healthy mix and I never overcomplicate things in terms of, you know, uh, we have like, obviously we have systems and structures on how we run campaigns, but you know, oftentimes it's just like, I, I try to be, be a little bit more creative and a little bit more open. So I throw in some images there, I throw in some videos, um, speaking of, uh, if you, it's, it's one little hack that <clears throat> we heard directly from Facebook. If you're running like all placements and audience network, there's like still delivery issues when it comes to video ads on audience network. So say you have like a video campaign, um, no matter what it objective, but you're using a video as a creative, always throw in like one image into that ad set because that will like, um, you know, um, increase your delivery on audience network because they still have problems, you know, showing videos on external sites. Ah, very cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, I was going to say what uh, right now, so outside of power editor, editor and, and, you know, your basic tool set, what, what third party tools are you thrilled with? What, what, what third party tools are really helping you in your business right now? Um, as a, by, by now we, we really try to, you know, develop our own, own dashboard. I mean, we have we have the API access, so we have like certain reportings and certain metrics, and you know, overview of all our accounts and business managers and campaigns that we only manage through that like um, own own tool of piece of software we build. But like outside of that, I think um, 
a really good one for moderating comments was like Agora polls, which is um, quite quite expensive compared to like other comment moderating tools, but um, it still does the job really well because you know it it pulls comments from all your all your pages, all your ad accounts into like one nice almost newsfeed type of stream where you nice. can just swipe swipe the comments and moderate the comments. Um, another tool I think I talked about um, in Berlin is supermetrics.com, which is kind of if you don't have like the resources yet or like time to invest in your own own PMD platform almost or your own dashboard utilizing the, the Facebook API, you can use third party tools like supermetrics and what they do is they use utilize the API for you, but you know present you with like a reasonable price, a nice user interface. I would actually recommend using their um, Google Sheets add-on. And what they do is essentially they just pull all sorts of data, and some of the data is not even available through like um, you know the the Facebook UI. That's only available through the API. So you you hook up Supermetrics, you connect your ad accounts, and what you can do then you say you run a solo offer across like two business managers and 10 ad accounts. So once everything is connected, you just, you know, pull these 10 ad accounts and you can kind of like with a pivot table, you can combine all the metrics from all the accounts together. So you wouldn't have like to manually individually export all the, the, the reports and like a CSV file from like your single ad account. So you can like kind of merge all that data together and then, you know, have amazing sorting functionality you can see which countries what age ranges which devices had like the lowest cpa and make really informed decision on decisions on your campaign to optimize because in the end it's all about we know that it's all about the data uh, when it comes to optimization and what you're doing with your campaigns and that tool just really helps you to you know cut down cut down to it and um and to see the, the, the effects to see the att the attributes that are really driving success Exactly, exactly. I mean, that that's especially useful if you run a lot of campaigns, offers across a lot of accounts, which a lot of people do these days because um, I barely hear anyone who's like, oh, yeah, I run like 200K a day on like two ad accounts, right? Yeah. Usually it's like the, the infrastructure is more spread out. Exactly. So are you guys doing a lot of automation then with your own? So you've sort of PMD when I when I was I was doing user acquisition for a, a gaming company before and I used a startup PMD called Toro that was just amazing. Uh, it's no, it got bought by Google actually. But uh, but so so you guys now you not only have a metric system, but you also have something that's probably using some automation in order to like to launch and, and manage campaigns or is that still all done manually in your organization? Yeah, it's a funny point because um Usually you try to automate all these things and Facebook now came up with their own uh, rule system within like ads manager and power editor, I think. But um, we, we're not using that many rules actually. You know, we, we try to keep it simple there. I, we, we use smartly and choir. We use like the rule based stuff in terms of like, um, you know, turn it down with like when the CPA, you know, go, go, goes above like your, your target, your target and um, then other rules where you know, you just upload a bunch of campaigns, go to bed, but you know if like the CPC is over like a, a dollar or something, it's not going to work out anyway in the end. Um, you know, by now, I think one reason why we might have um, gone back to a little bit more manual work is like, um, and that's maybe an interesting one, like a re the relationship you have with your campaigns. Like, you know, these rule-based things might allow you to run one or two more offers or, you know, a couple more campaigns, but you, you kind of get a little bit more detached. That's also why in our like internal internal processes here, a media buyer always uploads um, his or her own campaigns, right? It's not that some some like media analyst or like someone who's just helping out with on the, from the creative side uploads campaigns for them, and then you know they start running once the campaign is uploaded. No, it's like you you don't the, the relationship to your campaign is not deep enough, so you you're too detached from it if you're not you know, upload it at least yourself. That That's like our philosophy. And that's also why, you know, a guy like Willis, like our head of media buying, he can still run 10 offers, 10 campaigns. But um, even if you're just running two or three, um, there's a little bit more manual work. But in the end, rules never helped us out that much, to be honest. Handcrafted campaigns. I love it. Right, right. That you have to good. like, you know, feel the love, feel the love, put nice. some love into it. Thanks. All right. Well, speaking of love, I have a couple of questions from Patrick here, your your business partner oh. here. That he he, <laughs> he said he wanted me to, he wanted me to ask. <laughs> see any rules? Out. 
Uh, he wanted me to ask you what the most you've ever lost in a day is. I think we lost... Um, okay, I had another story, but I think that's something for like a fuck-up panel at um, FBML. Yes, now, okay, like, good. On a regular offer, we probably lost like, not, not that much actually, like 6k maybe a day or something. Okay, that's not, that's not brutal. Maybe if you had yeah. auto rules, if you didn't have your hands on the campaign and as much, you might have lost a little bit more. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, the next question from him was, how close have you come to giving up? Have you ever come close to like saying, fuck it, Facebook, you're fucking me one last, like, have you ever come, come close to quitting? Yeah, I guess almost every week, <laughs> I think. Yeah, you know, it, it happens frequently, but then again, it just depends, like, how you set up, what's your relationship, and by now, it's not like, you know, we have that that many policy issues anymore, because really, if you do, it's not, there's no way to, to being managed anymore. So I think we kind of went to like a quite healthy relationship with Facebook these days. So it's not like, you know, you're that annoyed. It's more like these days, it's more, it's not like policy issues. It's more like, you know, all these bugs in power editor and like all these little issues. Like there was for weeks, uh, like our media buyers, like almost lost their shit every day because they, they created like these beautiful long canvases with all sorts of sliders and interactive elements. And then, once you save the canvas 10 minutes later it was just gone and like half an hour of your work just gone like these these little bugs and issues with facebook are almost more annoying than everything else so but still i mean in the end it's kind of like this is ex-girlfriend you always come back to it's it's you're an addicted yeah you're not getting away from it i love it and yeah, I can. I can, and I, I, I bet there's a little bit of satisfaction. I know I, you hate it when Facebook messes up and there and there's bugs and stuff like that. But at least you know it's not your fault in any way. At least you can be like, "Ha, you fucked up. You're the. It's this is all on you, Facebook." Yeah, That's I mean the, the thing is with other traffic sources, you usually you know uh, the natives. You you sometimes get get back your money with Facebook. It's actually possible. A lot of people don't even try, so you should try. But it's much harder. So sometimes you know spending you know two three four k in an hour or something the whole lifetime budget of like two weeks stuff like that st still happens but it, it hasn't been too bad for us actually nice now a few weeks ago i saw an amazing picture of you and what looked to be a 200 pound dog uh is this your dog this is actually villa's dog the lithuanian farm boy's dog who um yeah is our new office dog now uh, what and it's a it's a Samoyed it's a it's a that huge white dog Charlie come here we're gonna introduce the podcast world to Charlie here Charlie I'm gonna recreate your photo ah! <laughs> that's oh. amazing <laughs> so that's Charlie Char there Char Charlie like, listens way better than Mochi who's our Samoyed Mochi yeah this is Charlie he's yeah. a poodle he's a Wheaton Terrier cross with a poodle and he's a total badass Char Charlie what's up he can't hear you but look there you go. Okay, you can get down now. Thank you. Oh, no, he may not get down. Well, anyway, I think... Amazing uh, dog. Yeah, he's super good. You should see him fetch. Uh, but uh, but thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I it appreciate it. Charlie is f fucking up my studio here. He's fucking with your tech. He's fucking with my tech. Get down. Get down. Okay. Nice, man. Well, uh, again, super great seeing you. I hope to see you in Bangkok. I'm not sure if you're going to make it out this year. But if not, I'll catch you in Germany shortly after, I'm sure. Right. Yeah, I'll have the greatest FOMO if I won't make it. But um, yeah, I mean, amazing talking to you. Let's catch up soon and um, have a great time in Bangkok. I will. Thanks, man. Have a Bye. good one. Bye. Bye.